that dialogue but but this is just a new yeah just just to get it out there again and um, to have it all in one place which I think is very helpful and I think really if we take our belief seriously that we are a church in constant dialogue with our God and that we have a God who's entered into that very costly dialogue, then if you want to take our own belief seriously, we can not afford not to enter into dialogue with others as well. As you know, many parish priests will say, yes, that's fine, we get on perfectly nicely with our Jewish and Muslim neighbours, but we're far too busy as it is without embarking on any new initiatives mm. to support this work. Well, and I'm very aware that people are incredibly busy and that priests are busy and lay people have very busy lives. But I think that dialogue is something that can be shared very easily. And um, when I'm talking about dialogue, I'm talking about the wider definition that the document also has. Um, so it's not just sitting down together and, and discussing the finer theological points. You know, it's as easy as, as having a chat with a Muslim neighbor or um, extending good wishes to a Jewish friend at a Jewish festival or, you know, indeed to share um, a meal, maybe a Christmas dinner with a family who's not Christian. And, and that sort of everyday contact can, can make excellent, can, can help make excellent progress with dialogue between the religions. So it's not something that should be left to experts. And indeed, the document says that lay people are often very well placed, actually, to enter into that dialogue. So um, it, it stresses that responsibility of lay people who are in the world, who have colleagues and friends and neighbours of different faiths, to actually enter into that dialogue. Do you have any best practice stories, any areas where you really have seen extraordinary results from just mm. this, as you say, very straightforward type of dialogue of daily mm. life? Well, I think there are a lot of touching stories out there. Actually, just very recently, um, one of my diocesan coordinators, as they said, into religious coordinator in every diocese, has got Muslim and Catholic women together, and they've shared their stories of praying with the rosary and with the Muslim prayer beads, and, and it was a very warm way touching occasion also I know of a Catholic and a Jewish lady again a coordinator who struck up a very fast friendship by interreligious dialogue and I think it's these things that, that might look fairly small but that really make a difference to communities and to how people feel about each other really. Are you suggesting that women may be leading the way in this field <laughs> or not? Well I think women are still often the people who pick children up from the school gate and you know the, the family managers to an extent. Now, now I'm not saying that's that's necessarily a good thing and I think men are coming into that, that field as well but I think at the moment we very much have women as the centre of families still and, and and, you know, they're arranging the play dates for the children and, and they're picking the children up from school and they're probably the ones who remember the neighbours' birthdays, you know, and they, they probably remember the neighbours' festivals as well, you know. So, yeah, I think women are doing fairly well in that field, yeah. Thanks there to Katharina Muller, Secretary for the Interreligious Relations Committee of the Bishops' Conference of England and Wales. And that's all from me, Philippa Hitchin, and from all of us here at the English Programme for today. Join us again at this same time tomorrow if you can. Or don't forget, you can always find all our news and feature programmes on the internet. Look us up at www.vaticanradio.org forward slash English. listening to Vatican Radio, Laudator Jesus Christus.